guys, welcome back. Mama Dr. Jones, OBGYN, and Mom24. Today, we're doing another of one of our favorite videos where we go through a YouTuber's birth vlog and just talk about some learning points. I think they don't know if it's a boy or a girl. That is so exciting. Ah, we got to change the narrative. That is what it looks like. And I can't cry on YouTube unless I have a scandal and need to do an apology video. I am a huge fan of Sean Johnson. I grew up doing competitive gymnastics. I was very good. I asked my mom for evidence of that and um, she told me it was all stored on um, eight millimeter tapes and so I can't show you because it's locked in a VHS conversion loophole problem. But I was excellent, I can assure you. If you're not subscribed, hit subscribe, turn on those notifications so you don't miss an upload. We're gonna jump right into Sean Johnson's birth vlog. And we go in on Monday at 9 p.m. I can tell you're nervous because you gotta get fidgety when you get nervous. Yeah. You ready for this? I guess so. <sighs> it sounds like she is at her due date, that she hasn't gone into labor yet, and that in conjunction with her doctor, they've decided that the best option for them is to schedule an induction. I haven't kept up with her outside of a sports arena, like I don't follow their channel or anything, but it seems like they're thrilled to be having a baby. Girls for the baby girls. Or buys for the baby guys. Hey babe, what is that? It's boob milk. <laughs> okay, two things I love already. One, she's working out. That's awesome. In most pregnancies that are otherwise healthy, I encourage my patients to stay active through their pregnancy. This is really good for baby. It's really good for the patient. It's just all around great. This is not advice. This is just to bring up talking points with your doctor. Ask about your specific pregnancy and your specific exercise routine to make sure that it's good for you. And then the other thing that she says is that's boob milk. So that's a great thing to bring up because a lot of people don't know that it's really normal to have some breast milk that leaks prior to delivery. It's just a normal part of being pregnant. Even as early as like 20 weeks, sometimes you'll see that. This is where, what'd she say? Our life is gonna change. What she said forever. Yeah. Okay, so over here, we got our birthing tub. They're showing a little bit of their labor and delivery room and they have a birth tub, which is awesome. American College of OBGYN recognizes that there is excellent literature supporting laboring in a tub being associated with improved pain control. We are still lacking in good research to say that delivering underwater is safe and or beneficial. You got any last words for your bump? I can't wait to meet what's inside. <laughs> I think they don't know if it's a boy or a girl. That is so exciting. Those are my favorite deliveries. I haven't talked a lot about my birth story with the twins, although I've written a little bit about it on my blog, but we didn't know if my twins were boys or girls. And it was so much fun. I was extremely resistant at first because I might be a little bit type A and my husband really wanted it to be a surprise. And it was really rough for the first 20 weeks because I really wanted to know. But after that 20 week ultrasound moving on after that was so much fun and looking forward to them being born and having that surprise was just super exciting. And personally, when I go to deliveries, I love when it's a surprise. Like it just adds a whole nother element to the birth. It's so much fun. So now I'm like even more excited to watch the rest of this. Crazy how much they move. And then this is the contractions and you're having one one every six to eight minutes. Baby's heart rate and the contraction monitor are typically visible from the nurse's station. So that allows us to kind of keep an eye on everything that's going on. You don't feel any contractions. Oh my gosh, I just realized it says October 29th. That is my son's birthday. I am pretty sure the baby will be born on this day. My baby, Paxton, shares a birthday with Sean Johnson's new baby. <laughs> I love that so much. Someone tell her, someone tell her their birthday buddies. I always love working on my birthday. I feel like there's almost no other field where it's super awesome to work on your birthday. I always think it must be neat to go like, the doctor who delivered you has the same birthday as you. Maybe that's just narcissistic of me, but I love working on my birthday because I think it's so fun to have little birthday buddies on my birthday. So let's see, I've had six birthdays that I was an OB doctor, and of those, I think four of them I've actually 
actually gotten to deliver babies on that day. I didn't deliver a baby on my birthday this year. She inserted something up into my cervix, like a balloon, trying to get it to dilate, which sucked. How do the tr contractions feel? They hurt. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. <laughs> So what she's talking about that they inserted into the cervix is a Foley balloon or a Cook catheter. And I'm trying to see, I actually have one here. We're gonna use this um, yarn ball that I have no idea why I have. This is a Foley balloon. In obstetrics, we use them sometimes for helping with induction of labor. Talked about last time how to check a cervix so you Use your hand to feel for the cervical dilation like this. And this cervix would be like three, three or so centimeters, four centimeters. While doing that, you would kind of slide it like this over my hand and into the cervix. And then it goes through the cervix. And this is, this is soft, doesn't hurt the baby. Baby is here like this. That is what it looks like. And then you put fluid in it. There's a syringe that I don't have one of that you put fluid in and it makes a balloon here. So that makes a little circle and holds it in. Now what this does, once the balloon is inflated on the end, pushes down and mimics baby's head being a little bit more engaged on the inside part of the cervix. It's called manual dilation and it just puts pressure on the cervix to help with dilation. I really like them. Now, from a patient standpoint, what I can tell you, because I've personally also had a Foley balloon inserted in the process of an attempted induction, they were made from Satan. I mean, he like invented them to torture people. I am I am certain of that. They work very well to do their job, but it's really, really common to need some pain control as that balloon comes through the cervix. Again, I've stated this before, I am a giant wuss. I could be over-exaggerating here, but I did not enjoy my time with a Foley balloon coming through my cervix. As far as effectiveness goes, super, super helpful in getting that dilation process started. So I still use them and just always tell people that it can be pretty painful coming out. And if they need pain control during that process, it's okay. Every two to three minutes. It's like a different level of love, I feel like, to see her go through the pain, but do it happily because it's for our child. The doctor said this is moving real slow. It's gonna be a while, but hope not too long. We'll see how this whole thing goes. They're doing everything they can, to have it born naturally, but at the end of the day, it's not up to us. Sean's just a champ like always. I love their attitude and how they just seem to be kind of going with the flow. And I always tell patients this in the process of us coming up together with a birth plan or going through the birth plan that they have written if they feel like they want to do that. It's like a wedding. You can plan all the little details you want, but don't try to plan the weather because that sets you up to be disappointed. Plan the things that are planable and try as much as you can to be flexible with the things that aren't. I think that it's really clear that they feel like whoever's taking care of them is on their side. And that's a really important part of this process is having good open communication with your doctor or your midwife in the process of your prenatal care and your delivery or induction. And that helps, I think, with the understanding that everybody's doing the best they can and sometimes things are out of our control. For example, if you tried really hard to plan your wedding and you planned on it being bright and sunny that day, but it poured rain all day and you let that ruin the whole experience of the day, it would be disappointing and difficult. And so it's not an exact analogy, but I do think it is important to kind of reframe if things aren't going the way that you expected. And I've been there. I've had two deliveries that did not go the way that I wanted them to go or expected them to go. And it is hard. It is hard to come out on the other side of that and not be super disappointed. It requires a lot of setting yourself up for trying to be flexible and understand that sometimes there are things out of our control. Beating yourself up. Because I'm weak. That's not even close to true. Hey. You're doing amazing. I'm getting an epidural, but... Why does that bum you out? Because <laughs> I should be able to do it naturally. No. I hate that she feels like that makes her weak. We're looking at someone who is an Olympian, a gold medal Olympian at that, and she feels like not wanting to continue laboring without anesthesia makes her weak. 
that is not true. It's totally fine to try and to have a delivery without anesthesia, but choosing to have an epidural in that case should be just fine. And, you know, it's it's society that puts these ideas into people's head that it's not okay or that you're weak or lesser if you choose to have anesthesia. And it's just not the case. It's just, I, I get worked up every time I talk about this because there's no reason she should have to feel like that, but somebody has made her to feel like that. And it's not okay. It's not okay with me that anybody should ever go into a delivery and have to change the plan in the middle and feel like they failed or something made them feel guilty or they are less than or weak. And I feel sad that people feel this way. And I know it happens because it happens to my patients all the time too. Can we just change the narrative? Less guilt, more life. This doesn't serve any greater purpose. And I hate that she's feeling that way. Ah, we got to change the narrative so that women don't feel guilty. Look how much better she feels now with her epidural. Like she's smiling, clearly is able to enjoy the labor process and hopefully the delivery process a little bit more. There are good things about having anesthesia and I just hate that guilt is associated with that for anyone. It makes my heart sad. That's what my kids would say. It makes my heart sad. Sean's water broke. I don't want to complain or anything, but I feel exhausted. I feel like I literally was just working out for like three straight hours, like just fatigued. I think it's because just the stress of like, I have no room to complain. Let's get real. Sean's been absolutely awesome. I'm glad that she's smiling again and laughing. That makes all this way better. It's okay to feel exhausted. You've been up all night and supporting someone who's in labor also. Being the support person for someone who's in labor, especially somebody that you care about on such a visceral level that you love and who is delivering your child, that is hard. Okay, I didn't know that this was a two-part series. Um, I, I did not plan for this, so now I'm gonna be editing this video forever, but of course, we have to finish it now. Uh, let's see. Birth vlog part two. Right, what's going down, babe? So, so funny. She knew about Lonnie. Right. I told her that Lonnie was going to be here. I was like, so... 22 hours later. Were you here? Were you here, Lonnie? Yeah, she told you. Yeah, she goes, Lonnie won't be here. Let's meet her. Lonnie won't be here because... So, she said 22 hours later, no progress. Said, hours later, no progress. Said, hours later, no progress. We're going back for a C-section. And it sounds like from her explaining that, that she's... She's okay with it. Uh, I, I hope that that's because she's had a great discussion with her doctor about her situation and that she is now getting to be excited about the fact that she's about to meet their baby, which is super exciting for me. I don't know about you, but I'm excited and I would like to know if it's a boy or a girl. The baby was not moving. Just went back to the operating room to get a C-section. And so I'm realizing that's a pretty significant surgery. Just sitting here praying for her, but I know she's gonna do great like she always does, and I'm so excited that now we finally gonna meet the baby. It sounds like they thought for a lot of reasons that this just wasn't working and that it was safer to change the plan than to continue trying when they weren't having any luck and had given it a very long attempt. He is in like a little bouffant like this. Why do I have all this stuff? I keep it because they're my props for TikToks. You heard that right. I made a video that I never posted a while back that I said in the intro, like, you can find me anywhere on social media as Mom and Dr. Jones. I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on TikTok. And then I said, I don't have any TikToks that I've made, I just have an account. And then like two days later, I was completely addicted. I don't think I've made any with this hat, but I do have things like that. I'm distracted, I'm not on topic. He's wearing one of those, that's a throwaway scrub bouffant for the operating room. And then he's got on paper disposable scrubs. They're going to take her back there, increase the dose of the epidural because it's at a labor dose right now, they need to move it to a surgical dose. And then they're going to scrub in, get everything set up, make sure her belly is cleaned off and all the drapes for the sterile field are set, test and make sure she is completely numb and ready to have the surgery. And then they're going to get dad. Sometimes I tell patients, it's going to feel like we forgot you. It takes a long time. And when you're really excited to get back there and have a birthday party, it feels like forever. We won't forget you. And the reason we want 
everything set up is so that when someone who is not used to being in the operating room comes in, people aren't running around or moving and compromising the sterility of the field. That's why it's done like that. Don't do it now either, you. Then you gotta go. <laughs> the whole process of a C-section usually takes 45 minutes to an hour. Actual operating time is quite a bit lower than that most of the time. There are exceptions to that that can be really complex cases, people who've had a lot of C-sections before, people with scar tissue in their pelvis, things like that. Usually the longest part of the surgery is after the baby is already out. It takes a lot longer to put things back together than it does to take them apart. Just like if you took apart a telephone. I don't know why that's the example I chose, but there you go. It's a girl, baby! <laughs> Okay, I don't always get weirdly teary, but that was so eerily reminiscent of my own delivery where we found out that our twins were girls. Something about that just like took me back there. I love that they held baby up over the drape. I do that in all of my C-sections. Actually, most of the time ask my anesthesiologist to drop the drape. That meant a lot to me in my own delivery. And I think that for some patients that means a lot to them too. That right there just about made me actually cry. Um, it was like eerily reminiscent of my own delivery with my girls who are gonna be seven. What am I doing? Ah. Their birthday is in a few days and I'm going to cry if I keep talking about it and I can't cry on YouTube unless I have a scandal and need to do an apology video, in which case I will be using ice to make it appear that I am crying, just like some recent YouTubers have done and taught me how to do. But I will not cry right now talking about my children. Can we move on? Thank you. People always see me watch these and say things like, oh my gosh, you get like that at deliveries. Do you cry at, like I have never cried in a delivery with a patient except for a couple of stillbirths, which obviously is kind of different. I'm so in the zone, like I have a job to do and I need to do it well and I need to make sure everybody is safe. And I have a hundred things going through my head that I'm checking off to make sure that we're doing the best thing for both the patient and the baby and everybody is, where they need to be and I'm taking care of those things. Like I don't usually feel emotionally attached to the experience in a delivery because I have so much I'm doing. There's something very different about watching people go through it. And I think when I watch these, I view them through my mom eyes a little bit more than I get to when I'm really busy at the hospital. So that's not to say I don't deeply, deeply care for and get attached to a lot of my patients and feel like the experience is really special. It's just can't take care of people well if I am emotionally trying to experience that at the same time. Does that make sense? This was super good. I hope you guys learned something. I am so happy for them. They look like they are thrilled to have Drew Hazel join their family. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and turn on notifications so you don't miss an upload. Be kind to yourself, to each other, to me. In the comments, be kind, and I will see you next time. <laughs>